You are listening to Genuine Chit Chat. This show is for real. Hello there, guys, and welcome to another episode of Genuine Chit Chat. This week, I'm again joined by Chris Brayton of the I Like to Like Things podcast. Now, this is part two of our chat, so make sure you go back and listen to part one if you haven't already. But part two is much of continuation of what we spoke about prior. It's about being the sort of the modern man, in air quotes, discussing vulnerability and crying and admitting when you're wrong. And then it also sort of goes into the conversations about parenthood, trying to make your kids a better person than you sort of were. Empathy is a big thing as well. And then towards the end of the conversation, Chris talks about his weight loss journey, and we both agree in the importance of pockets. I did appear on a recent episode of the I Like to Like Things podcast. I spoke about my favourite ever TV show, which is BBC's Sherlock. I'll include a link to that in the description as well. And uh, there's more information in the description of how you can get in touch with Chris of the I Like to Like Things podcast and things. And I cannot recommend the show enough. I look forward to it every Monday. uh, And I just am so happy that Chris came on the show so I could somewhat help promote that. So after you listen to this conversation, make sure you go check out I Like to Like Things podcast. And um, that's really going to be it for me at the start here, guys. So I'm going to let the conversation come through. Uh, and then I'll be back at the end to talk about what's coming up, a few guest spots and things I've been doing here and there, and the sort of stuff you can expect from being subscribed to Genuine Chit Chat in the future. So I really hope you guys enjoy this listen, and obviously give Chris all the love on social media that you can. Anyway, without further ado, here is Chris Brayton. Welcome to Genuine Chit Chat, where we have honest conversations with interesting people, and I'm your host, Mike Burton. But we're so happy, and um, I'm not gonna lie, my girls are pretty great. They are, they are pretty, pretty, pretty great, and um, I, they're, they're just awesome people, and they're my best friends, and uh, yeah, and but yeah, being, um, I, I like, yeah, exactly, I like to barbecue, but uh, I like it helping my youngest daughter uh, paint butterflies. You know what I mean? Like it's just like I, I love the color green. But also, my shirts are pink. Like, it doesn't really, this doesn't matter, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, like, I think if you start, when it starts to matter too much on those type of things, you have to start taking a look on the inside. And, like, why? Why do I, why, who, who told me that I couldn't wear pink? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, who, 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 who told me that? And, um, yeah, anyway, so you just really have to start doing those type of, like, self-reflective things. And yeah. uh, having daughters changed my life getting married started that whole that whole role of just changing and um i look back at who i used to be when i was younger and i i still like that guy he 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 was a nice guy and but man he was he was he was ignorant and uh, he was he did not know what he was doing and <laughs> i'm glad that he learned how to how to change so <laughs> yeah it's amazing as well because I'm a I'm a Patreon supporter of the Like to Like Things show, so right. I've got a little yes. inside yes. behind the curtain. But you you do shows right. uh, with your daughters, and I've listened to I think one or two with your eldest, I believe it was, and uh-huh. it was it was fun hearing that interaction and hearing like that's one of the things yeah. I thought to myself like if I were to model myself after after anyone that I've ever met, genuinely speaking, like I, I don't I know I shit you not, it is you because of not only <laughs> Like it, it sounds weird, and it sounds like I'm just because I, I do like to you know big up my guests and things because you know positivity is great mm. and all that sort of stuff. But genuinely, the more I've been thinking about it, and one of the reasons I think I connect with your show, both on Patreon and normal, so much is you've got your views on positivity, you've got your views on you know just people doing what they want to do, not because society right. or anyone else dictates they should do. But there's also you seem like such a great dad because you and Elise have mentioned as well and your relationship with Elise, like I think I messaged you after first hearing I like to like things and things um, and I think I said something like, you know, your relationship just sounds so great because you're both wanting to try new things for each other. There's not that I'm owed something and you're owed it's like we're doing this together and you specifically, I remember saying stuff like you you always admit if you're wrong and that's that's something that men oh, yeah. often don't do. And I had that, like my dad, one of his biggest flaws that he would never admit he was wrong. Like this is uh-huh. not to be a downer, but the only time my dad ever apologized to me in his life was when he told me he had cancer, which is the only time he should never have apologized to me. That's the one right. time where it's like, dad, this is the only yeah. time of the hundreds of times you've made me cry because you've been a dick. And this is, you know what I mean? So it's like <laughs> for many years uh, when my dad was about, <clears throat> I... I had a bit of a complex about 
not saying I was wrong because I saw it as be- as a weakness, which obviously it's not. It's actually, in my right. view, strength admitting you're wrong because it's being vulnerable. Absolutely. And it takes a lot of strength to be vulnerable with someone, both in you know opening up relationships, emotional things, and being wrong. And it took me a while to learn that. And from you as how you act around your kids and at least and things, you know, you're open about being wrong and about the gender roles thing, but also you say frequently, and it's funny, and it was in the Pixar Patreon podcast you spoke about and it's like, you were just like, oh yeah, I watch that film and I cry every time. Like, what does daddy do? He cries and it's just like the, the, even a man crying is something that I think more right. people need to, not eat, not necessarily see, no, people don't need to see men cry necessarily, but in the sense of they need Men or boys need to know it's okay to cry. And, Absolutely. And, and you yeah. show that. And that's why I want to say, and I don't want to make you feel embarrassed or anything, And but I, <laughs> it's just truth of what I've perceived of you and how I interpret what you do is just, no one's perfect. But from what I've observed from you, no. so many elements of how you, the elements of what you try to do, I think is what I admire the most about you as an individual. And that's why I mean, in a sense of, I would try and, aim to be a dad similar to you and try and be the husband that you are in the sense of like just so many different elements of where you try and you always have the best intentions for the people that you care about and there's no bullshit and that's what i appreciate thank you so i mean i'll i'll thank you so much like thank thank you i that means a lot to me because it's it's something that i think about every day it really is and i'm i'm a fairly um i'm a fairly selfish person um, I, I think all of us can be, mm-hmm. and so uh, at, at different times. And so I just, I, I really try and focus on the people around me, and I feel like it makes me happier. Um, and I think it makes other people, trying to make other people happy makes me happy. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm lucky that way. But uh, yeah, I, I think the most important thing that anyone could ever do is change their mind when presented with something new. Mm-hmm. And I feel like so many men um, across all societies feel like you have to, um, quote, unquote, stick to your guns. Mm. You got to stick to your guns. Even if something is coming at you that, like, is, is, is different or scary or whatever, you got to stand your ground. And it's like, why? That's exhausting. Mm. It's exhausting to do that. And so, like, if you're wrong... Like and like you said it too. Like when someone says sorry to you, how great do you feel? Like if you're truly wronged, if you're truly wronged, um, and they did something wrong, if you say sorry, the healing immediately happens. And and we'll talk about dads again too. Like if you're mad at your dad or you're mad at someone that you you fully love, and we'll keep it in the the whole like the male gender roles at, at, for for now. But like those type of like men that are in your life, like if they said sorry, you would forgive them anything, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, and so like you just project what you would feel onto somebody else, and like that you know that, that like a, a parent like I a parent saying they're sorry for something is so huge because it doesn't happen so very often, and yeah, and men to their wives or or or, or whoever they don't say sorry. It's just like where does the healing begin, you know, and and yeah, so. Anyway, thank you so much. Uh, that me- that really means a lot to me, Mike. I, I really do appreciate it. And I will uh, try and keep doing my best <laughs> to be a good example, I guess. Yeah. The podcast is, is a perfect show of that. And it's one of those things. It's, it's, it's a, yeah. exactly as you say with, like with my dad, as I've said, like he was a great man in so many ways. And there's so many things I admired right. about him. And I'm thankful that I learned from him and things. But one of the biggest things after, especially after he passed away and I had like a lot of time to sort of process everything, uh, which was, you know, eight years ago now. So it was like, one of the biggest things I was like, you know, I did a podcast with um, one of my older brothers. Um, It was, I did, I released on Father's Day in the first year I was doing podcasting. So it's one of the older ones and we speak about dad and Mm. it's called Remembering Dad or something. And we speak about his positive parts, but also his negative parts because, you know, not to speak ill of the dead, but people are flawed and we want i want to talk with someone who knew my dad and not just be like you know when people die especially celebrities and things i'm not saying you should be horrible to celebrities when they die that's not what i'm saying but like you know when someone (laughs) dies it's normally oh let's focus on all the amazing stuff they did unless they're like a legitimately awful human being then it's just you know all the bad stuff but generally speaking you know media outlets stuff just focus on all the positive and 
that's often what happens with people as well. And that is good to do in some right. elements. But me and Rob, that's my brother, when we were speaking about it, we were just like, you know, these were some of the amazing things that dad did. But equally, he did these, not did these things, but he acted in this way, which, right. you know, I wouldn't, damaged is probably too strong of a word, but affected me quite badly. And it of took course. years after he passed for me to really accept being wrong and being vulnerable and because right. he would never ever admit he was wrong about anything he he would argue with you until you're blue in the face and then he would storm off and then when he realized he's wrong he would buy you something and never ever talk about it <laughs> like and that right. doesn't work yeah. like that does not i don't want sounds like, like my mom it's just like i don't yeah, want it's just like my mom yeah that's yeah. megan's mom's a little bit like that she yeah. doesn't listen to the show unfortunately yeah. uh, if she is i love you sue yeah. you're great but <laughs> it's one of those things where it's just like <laughs> they never admit they're wrong and then it's like oh they bought me a new game oh that's cool but i don't want the game i want them just to look at me in the eye and say, look, I, I'm wrong. Because yeah. when you have a parent who can openly admit their own flaws, it means that as a kid growing up, you can accept your own as well. And for ages, right. I didn't do that. And I was like an argumentative asshole sometimes. And I would just not right. admit I was wrong and I wouldn't apologize. And I wasn't realizing I was doing it until afterwards. And I was trying to become a better person and think who's the man I want to be. I think part of it was actually when mm. I wrote the, the mini speech thing I did at my dad's funeral. I mean, I was trying to think of things and I was just like, you know, I want to be, you know, I hope hopefully one day I can be half the man that he was in a sense. And after I made the speech and I did it all and et cetera, I was thinking about it and I was just like, I want to be better and I want my kids to be right. better than I was. I don't want my kids having to wait till I eventually pass. Maybe, hopefully I won't pass my kids at 20 when I eventually have them, but like get to 20 and learn these lessons, which really shouldn't be a moment of clarity it should just be how you're raised and how you understand being a person right. and if i can have my kids learning the lessons i learned in my 20s from the start and they can just be slightly better than i am then that would make me so happy and i think that's kind of the angle of where i'm coming from a lot of the time when viewing what i see as you as a parent in a sense yeah i that's so powerful though is what you said it's like you do <laughs> The biggest thing is, as as an adult, not necessarily even as a parent, as a parent, is you don't want to re repeat the mistakes of the past, mm -hmm. and you don't want to repeat the mistakes of the of the generation prior. And like, because like, guess what? They're better than the generation that was before them. They are learning more. We're like we like there are always going to be bad elements to every generation, mm -hmm. no matter what. It's yeah. just it's human nature. But then there's going to be the the overflow of it is that like people are growing growing as a society growing as parents and you just learn more you just learn and and that's the most important thing and so as long as you're not repeating the mistakes eventually everything's gonna be pretty great like and so like yeah similar like like what you're saying is that like as parents we have such a profound effect on our children and like just because and it just be just through the nature of who you are and that is an it is an, an incredible responsibility, and and I think every, most people take that very seriously. Like it's an incredible responsibility, and that like you don't want to repeat the mistakes that their parents did. And so like same thing. My dad's great. I love my dad. I love my mom. I do a lot of things completely the opposite of how he parented. <laughs> like completely, and like and that's the thing is is like I love my parents. Like I I do. I love my dad. And like. Like just speaking, just as a dad too. Like, but there are some things. Just like he would never, like, never in a million years. Like one of the things is like we we got spanked. Like we we were spanked as kids. It was a thing. Never spanked my girls. Mm -hmm. And just like, but like they were just like that is what you do. You spank, and that is how you do. I'm not like traumatized or anything like 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 in any way. But like that's just one of the things. It's mm. just that like I I never gonna spank my kids. Just just not how it's gonna happen. I I want them to always have my hands just be for like hugs. You know, <laughs> like that's that's all I want my hands to to be for. And and then but then also the other one would then be um is is the uh he like I want like like you said I want my girls to be better than me. Like that is that like if, if my girls are better than me, I have succeeded. That's the, that is that is my one goal in life is for them to be better. My dad has a hard time with that. Like he doesn't necessarily like a son's being better at things than him. Like um, he does. Like this is this is super personal. He's fairly jealous of my relationship with 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 Elise mm. and like Elise is my best friend and she always will be. I'm her number one cheerleader. And um, I think everything she does is amazing. One because it is, and one I just 
madly in love with her, always will be. And my dad, <laughs> he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. And um, like he loves my mom for sure, but it's not the same relationship that I have with my wife. <laughs> and so he's mad jealous of that. And he doesn't like that. And so he won't point that out. He won't like point out what like a good marriage we have. So, and then like my, my older, my, my younger brother, I'm the oldest brother. Um, my middle brother, like he was more successful than my dad at a younger age. So my dad is very successful, but my younger brother, my middle brother is, is very entrepreneurial and, and like makes really good decisions and stuff. And so like my dad didn't really like that, but it's like, like we've had this conversation with him. Like you should you should want us to be better than you, right? That's like the point of being a parent. <laughs> and like that, we've never talked about it since because like he just kind of like was silent. And I think he finally has got it. I think like you want us to be better than you. Like that. that's just, that's you. Like my girls being better than me is my success. Like that, like, like, it's, like it's their own thing. They're their own people. But I think you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that like them being better than me is me succeeding at my job. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, and so anyway, I think he's I think he's kind of got it now. It's like you don't need to beat us at things, old man. <laughs> like, like, don't, like, don't, like you, you crotchy old you, you go you old geezer. Like just like be happy that we're doing really well. Like we're all fairly successful. And I have a younger brother. Uh, my youngest brother is uh, is kind of an idiot, so um, he's always got that guy to look down on. So <laughs> so he doesn't. He doesn't listen to podcasts anyway. So, uh, yeah. So it's like, just be, just know you're better than that one. You know, your, your final one. So, but your other two, they're doing pretty good. They, they got it all kind of, they got it figured out at least a little bit. So. And I always think about it, like <laughs> with my dad and things like my dad was born 1949. So he was born four Whoa. years. Yeah. Yeah. So like he was an older dad anyway, because like, as I said, my old, I've got two older brothers three if you count my because of you know marriage and stuff but two brothers by blood and because they were from previous marriage and stuff i didn't grow up with them necessarily i grew up seeing right. them and things but they weren't in the same household like we have different mums mm -hmm. but um my my mum and dad my mum's 10 years younger than my dad uh, was and things so mum's born 59 and the funny thing is i think about that quite a bit because i was like he he grew up very poor. He had he was the oldest of four siblings. Um, he like started some business. He was a self made man. Uh, when I was growing up, we had we weren't rich, but we had money. We we never had to worry about money, which right. is something I'm very thankful for from my dad. And he instilled yeah, a very good yeah, and he instilled a very good work mm. ethic into me. You know, but I realised that he was born four years after World War Two ended, and like rationing and things yeah. in England, I'm not even. I don't know when it stopped specifically, but even if it stopped dead when the war stopped, which I certainly didn't, you've still got the repercussions of the feel of that. Just like in America, I know you guys weren't right. involved in the World Wars as much or it's affected by them, but still you guys had the Great Depression. That's only a few generations ago. So you think like right. a few grandparents ago, they were living in the Great Depression and us in England was like going through you know, rationing and things for wars, etc. So you've got this mentality of like, you have to hold on to what you've got. You can't throw any food away. You can't do anything. You it's all for you and your family because it's it's war out there right. literally it's all for your family that's who you protect you work as hard as you can that's all you provide and then the next generation had it like slightly easier than that generation and then slightly right. easier than that and i find that as it goes down the line like my life now is probably easier than my dad's life was when he was my age but instead of being right. like you know oh awesome my life is better and i'm not going to learn from that i try and look at it in a way of okay my dad his flaws were probably from his dad who literally lived through World right. War Two. So it's like, he never hit, like, my parents were never awful to me, I want to clarify. Like, my dad was just a bit of a dick sometimes. Like, they would, right. like, they wouldn't spank me, but they would hit me in the arm. Not, nothing hard that would leave a mark, but, you know, the sort of, don't do that, slaps, so, you know, and I also wouldn't do that mm. to my kids because I, I don't want my kids to ever fear me in any way. I only want them to... Right respect me and love me you know i don't want the element of they're worried they're gonna do something bad and i'm gonna hit them on the arm for it i, I never want that dynamic right. but i don't hate my parents for doing that because i understand that like my my granddad my mum's uh dad who's still alive i absolutely hate him and i don't hate a lot of people he <laughs> is an awful man and he's just done right. some horrible things in his life and it's like from my mum's turned out pretty well from having him as a dad like I don't even see him anymore like I haven't seen him in I think a decade and it's just like I try and be sympathetic to the older generation in, in certain ways while also trying to understand how they came from but also going okay well 
just because they were like that, and I understand they were like that, that doesn't necessarily excuse the behavior, but it does at least mean I can look at it from a distance and go, okay, yeah, I don't want to do those things at all. And I'm privileged to be in the position now where I don't have to worry necessarily about being shipped off to war, fingers crossed, or anything like that. And I can (laughs) use those, you know, in, in a way of putting it, like I can use my privilege to hopefully benefit my the future generations and people around me. And I think that once again, that's something that not only you do as a person, but your show is just like, Hey, I don't know about this thing. Teach me about it. And I'm going to become yeah. a better person from that. And it's just so many elements of just accepting that you're not the best at probably anything, you know, <laughs> Pro- maybe, no. maybe one thing in the entire world, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Like, like you're all right, though. Like, everyone's unique, mm-hmm. and everyone has their own unique perspective, and there's something that they can bring to the table. And that's the most important thing. And that's kind of how you have to look at life, is that everybody's got something. But, like, like even me, and I, I, I love being a dad. I'm not going to be the magic guy that finally figures out how to be the perfect parent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's something that I want to do, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm striving for, and that's all we can do. All we can do is try and be better. Than, than you were the day before or the previous generation. And um, yeah, like, 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 like you were saying, like my, my grandparents were awful. All of them were, were terrible. Mm. Like it's bad people. My mom's both, both her parents were raging alcoholics. Um, my, my dad's parents were physically and emotionally abusive. Like it was, it was bad. Like my, my grandparents were all the worst. My granddad's that sort of element of things as well. That physical abuse and, and emotional abuse is yeah, yeah, it's nasty. Horrible. And, um, so like, that's why, I, uh, and that's kind of where I came at with my dad is that like, you're way better than your parents. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't even like, like that. Aren't you glad? <laughs> like, like you did the same thing. So that's, that's what I was trying to explain to him. It's like, you want your kids. Everybody should be better. And like, I, I hear a story about my great grandparents. They sounded awful. You know what I mean? Like, they all just sound like awful, awful, awful people. And um, so it's like, yeah, let's hope that each generation gets a little bit better. Hopefully a lot a bit better. And, um, like, my parents, like, my parents, same thing. Like, maybe my dad doesn't say sorry enough, but, like, it, he wasn't a raging alcoholic and an abuser. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. Like, yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. You totally won parenting. Like, you did it. You did it. And your kids are your kids are getting better. Well, two out of three. Two out of three aren't doing too bad. So, um, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, um, yeah. I, I, like, we've said that too, to uh, Elise and I have both said, like, we know we're not the magic parents that have figured it all out. Like, our girls are going to come to us and they're going to tell us something that we did. And that we did that was that was that was either hurtful to them or or stunted them in some way. And the only thing we can say is sorry. And like, that's that's it. And then just let them let them say their words, like let them have let them say what they need to say. They're going to work on it because like the goal of a parent is to have their kids want them to be in their life. Mm -hmm. Not that you want them to feel like you need to be in their life out of obligation. Like I want my daughter's. To want me in their life, and that's and 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 then if they eventually have kids, same thing. I feel like I'm geared up to be like the greatest grandpa. <laughs> yeah. like I I, I want to be a grand. I want to be a grandpa so bad. Like <laughs> like I've already tried to like pick out my my grandpa name. Like what what am I gonna be called and everything. So anyway, um, but like yeah, it's just important. Like I I hate I hate the word obligation because like I feel like I lived a lot of my life out of obligation, and. Like I was obligated to different people, whether they put it on me or I put it on myself, like, like it's, or like, or it was expected. And I'm sure you probably feel something similar too, just the, the way that you like, you just like, you're obligated to do certain things. And I hate that. I hate that feeling. Like it's one of the few things I truly do hate mm-hmm. is obligation is that like there, there are, there is something to be said about doing something because it's the right thing to do. Like that, that is, that's important. Like there are things that are the right thing to do. That's why you should do them, but you should want to do them out of, out of love. You should want to do them out of, because it makes someone happy. It should be out of, because like you want to bring them out of a funk or like you want to do it because it sounds fun. So like, that's what I want my girls to do. Like, Oh, hanging out with mom and dad is great. And I feel loved and accepted and, and whatever it is, and I cannot tell that to him enough. And so, um, and it's it, like like our oldest daughter doesn't want to have kids. 
I will see how that works out. And our youngest daughter, all she wants to do is have a thousand kids. <laughs> so like they couldn't be any more different. And like they raised both, they've both been raised by us. And like they, like no, no kids. And the other one, yeah, like so, oh, I'm never moving out. And you're just gonna help me raise our kids. And I'm like awesome. That sounds like that actually sounds amazing. Just <laughs> let's let's keep that going. So uh, and uh, anyway, so it's funny. And whoever they end up with, um, I'm gonna love them no matter what too um because whoever they pick is going to be an amazing human so i'm i'm really excited it is funny as well with what you said about like not not to go off or what about our respective parents and things but it is like the probably the last thing i'll touch upon is you know my mum's amazing and i, I love her to pieces and things and she's great yeah. and but there's there's one thing that i've i've mentioned once or twice in the podcast my mum's only listened to one or two podcasts, one of which was the one about uh, my dad and things. So if you're listening to this mum, I am sorry. But this is one thing that she said to me, which has always stuck with me. And it's just, it's weird how one right. sentence that she probably wouldn't, doesn't even remember saying. And uh-huh. she, I want to clarify, my mum is in no way homophobic at all. But she said to me once <laughs> when I was like 12 or something before I, you know, start, I, I'm a heterosexual male, but that doesn't really matter. But she said to me, if you were gay, that's, com- that's okay. I would just be a little bit disappointed. Uh, that she didn't mean it to, Whoa. but you know what I mean. Like she doesn't mean it. My mum's not homophobic. She would never. If I did turn out gay, I think more so what she would say would be at the time. Oh, the aspect of grandkids isn't as simple. So I think that that was probably <laughs> oh. how. Which I don't agree with. You know, I still. You know, if I had kids, right. whoever no, they want to be. No, of course not. No, but no, I, no. It's little things like that. We. I just think. That sort of moment is going to make me really be careful with my words when I have kids because it's like she probably never remember saying that. She never meant it maliciously. The, even the way she said it wasn't, in my view, trying to be malicious. And I've kind of subtly yeah. tried to – but that's just one of those prejudices and things that you just – they're saying it now in 2021. And a lot of people are like, what? Probably saying, what the fuck? But it's not it's – not, my mom's yeah. not a bad person. I want to clarify that so many times. <laughs> but it is just that thing of yeah. that little thing like – it stuck with me for ages, and like I've never struggled with my sexuality. Right. But if I did, that would definitely be playing on my mind. And I'm sure if I came out to my mum, I mean, she'd be surprised because I've been Megan for so long and all the women I've been with. But like, if if something right. happened, I came out, she wouldn't love me any less. But it's right. just that weird thing, you know. What I mean, where it's just you don't know what you're gonna say, which can ripple affect your kids for their lives. Right, and you don't, yeah, and it's. I, we know a lot of people that want to, like, if um, if either of my girls came out, fine, mm-hmm. well, great, like it, it does, it, it, like it does not matter to me whatsoever. And um, if if anything, um, if, if they it come out in any way, if they're anywhere on the the spectrum at all, it's like it, but like. For me, it's just it doesn't change. Like they still like the same things. <laughs> they're still just them. It means it means absolutely nothing to me. Like because I know that they're the people that they want to be. And any if I if I hamper their growth and their journey in 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 any way, um, then I failed. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like I failed in any way. So like all I want them to do is know that they have every option in the world, and all they get is unconditional love from me. That's that's all that matters. And um. It, so yeah, I, I get it though. But yeah, the p- parents of the previous generation said some weird things. Yes, <laughs> they'll say some weird things because like that's the same thing. I get what you're. I do understand what you're saying. Like you would say, you would never say in a million years that your mom was homophobic. I I I, I understand what you're saying, but like it's that weird stuff. It's like oh, if if I ever said something like that, I would immediately be so disappointed in myself. I would never say anything like that because it's I don't. That's that's not how I feel. But like if 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 like I heard my wife say that, like what the heck is wrong with you? Like what? Is, like we need some serious discussion about you know you know what I mean? Yeah. But like like yeah. Anyway, yeah. If yeah, anyway, um, as of right now, I would they. It's very funny. They will murder me for this. They watch a lot of Thor movies. Um, they are big big fans of Thor. And they like it when Thor comes on screen. And they like it when Thor flexes his muscles. They, <laughs> Thor, like, um, so do I, I have a fair. fairly... I mean, he's a very yeah, good-looking yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, but like, um, they've watched Thor a little too much, mm. if I just want to be... The, for me to have any type of like, hmm, I wonder where their 
they're headed, you know, like, so like, it's just funny. So, but anyway, uh, that's not, <laughs> that's <laughs> big, big, big fans, big, big fans of Chris, both of them. Mm, mm-hmm. Thor. Hmm. Ooh, it's Thor. Mm, Thor. <laughs> okay, baby. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, I, I really I, like Thor yeah. too. The, that scene in Thor yeah. too. Oh, what's your favorite scene? Oh, the one where he's like oh, in the pool of water. Oh, where he's re- soaking wet and topless. Yeah, I just, <laughs> right. I love, it's something about I, that scene I really like. Hmm, I, I wonder what that could yeah, be. Yeah, <laughs> it's, exactly. Yeah, it's really funny. Yeah, it's super funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's so fu- Yeah, parents, parents were a trip, man. <laughs> Love them to death, but oh my gosh, just want to be a little bit better than them. And this is all coming from me being a cisgendered hetero man. Like, like I have such a narrow point of view and I, j- all, all we can do is just be inclusive and learn from other people that are smarter and, and have had different ways of, of living their life. And, um, that's the, like the biggest thing that, that, that threatens us today, in my opinion, is is uh, is fear of the other, and any mm. type of fear of the other is going to make any anything that we want to talk about is going to be an issue. And so, the second you start meeting people, talking to people with different points of view, and 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 learning, and and having absolutely zero judgment, zero hate, um, mm-hmm. uh, once w- until we get rid of those type of things. But uh, like like we we're both big fans of Star Wars. <laughs> And fear leads to anger. Anger, you know, anger leads to hate. Hate is the path to the dark side, and then that's the path to the dark side. Like those, and it's it's super true. Yoda says some great yeah. things, and and it's like, yeah, fear is just so like being afraid of things is is. There are certain things you do need to be afraid of. Like I'm definitely afraid of sharks, but like I can't take so a shark in a, in a fair fight. Yeah, so, so it's I, like that's fine. That's a healthy fear. But like fear yeah. of anybody that's different or anything or different point of view, and and like you've got to get over that. Yeah, mm, yeah um, I agree completely. It's yeah, all about empathy, yeah, so, isn't it? At the end of the day, yeah. this whole like the, the subject matter of the core of this entire conversation, without it may seem like I orchestrated it. I, I didn't specifically, but it is <laughs> just about empathy. It, it is in yeah. every way, you know. And it's like it's as you say, you know, Styles is you know a very good way of teaching people. You know, if you are horrible and mean and awful, just horrible stuff will happen to you, and you have an unfulfilling life. If you are Absolutely. true and you're good and you do things for you do things that are harder to do but are the Mm -hmm. right thing to do eventually in the long term the people around you and your life will be better and it's not the easiest decision is rarely the right one in the sense of like when when you have to you know it's like if you've done something it's something as simple as like you know for example this hasn't happened but for example you know if if i break something at home while megan's out or something you know I can try and cover that up. I could try and hide it. I could try and buy it again and cover it up. But the probably the hardest thing to do is say, look, I broke this thing of yours. I'm sorry. <laughs> I screwed up. Like I, That's probably, of all the options to do, That's in some ways there's that barrier of like that part of you, at least I, I used to have it. It used to be a voice in my head, not literally, but like a, a feel of like, I don't want to say I'm sorry, I don't want to admit I've done this, I don't want to tell the truth in this way because it's hard to do. I've had to, you know, force my way through my own demons in some... I don't know if it's a demon, that sounds a bit mm-hmm. strong, but you know what I mean? Like, your own oh, mind no. kind of try and push you in the wrong direction for certain reasons uh, here and there. And it's just like, Star Wars shows it perfectly. It's just like, you know, it's not... E- doing the right thing is, is not always easy, but that doesn't mean it's still not the right thing. Right. No. Yeah, it's it's all about. I always feel like about a lot of it is is, is pre- preparation, is doing mm-hmm. a lot of the hard work at the beginning. Um, but like, if if you do everything consistently, it starts to become it starts to be, be it starts to become a habit. And yeah. so, like, if you practice positivity, even if you're not positive all the time, and like, I I firmly believe this. Like, eventually, like, it will win you over. Like, like. I'm not saying because there there is such thing as toxic positivity. I like there are like like I I point to the movie Inside Out very often on, for Pixar is that like if you were just joy all the time pushing for it never but like there is time for sadness there is time for you to mourn there is time for you to process and things like that but you like like I I do not believe that you just are positive 100 percent of the time like like I said no. I cry often I think it's very healthy and like letting those emotions out and. Like feeling in a safe space to be able to to let those emotions out is is important. But like, but I'm just saying, like, normally positive is the way to go. Um, it, it's practice, and like a lot of people say things about that about our, about our girls. Like, um, 
is that they uh, they're they're just good kids. And it's like, well, we put a lot of work in when they were really little, and then now they're eight and ten, and and turning into they're, they're turning into adults uh, right before our very eyes. Like we put all the hard work in. Now it's just you know talking, talking it out. Why did we do this? What did, what do you think happens with this? It's just so so since since we put all of that relationship stuff stuff, <laughs> it's like literally life. But since we put relationship <laughs> into our it, it, you know put time and effort into our relationship with our kids, like they don't just kids don't just magically turn out good. Um, that there's there's life that happens to them and 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 everything. And and some people turn out good in spite of their parents. Um, and some people are good because of their parents. So it just like whatever happens, but. Like yeah, like we get we can just talk to our children because we've have that relationship with them that that we can just okay, you, what do you think is wrong here about this or what did you do? like right, let's talk about what you did right here. This is great. Look like look at look at the consequence of you doing this right thing. And so it's just all just conversational. So, so much of it is just preparation and I think with life it's just like if you're positive all as much as you can be, it's just going to leak into the rest of your life. It, it's super important. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, I don't necessarily believe in the idea of karma being a physical force necessarily in the sense of, because there are some people who do horrible things and they get away with it and that sucks. And there's some people who do really nice things and horrible stuff happens to them. And that also sucks. But like Mm -hmm. in general, and I found this from my own life, um, but especially it's one of those things that people will notice, especially in my podcast, I will often mention my dad and it's not because, you know, I'm sad about it, anything anything like that, but it's, it's an anchor point in my life, and it is right. it's the worst thing that's ever happened to me, but it's the best thing that's ever happened to my character because right. it may, it changed me in so many ways, and it changed my outlook completely. I think I touched upon it um, when I was on your show, and it was just like it the that horrible thing happening happening to me made me look and go, okay. L- to put it bluntly, life sh- is shit enough without me making other people's lives worse. Absolutely. So it's like. I don't need to make other people's lives worse by me being, you know, a, a self, like an arrogant dick to people. That's not what this right. world needs. People no. have enough horrible things in their life as it is. If I just try and help my friends out, even if it's inconvenient, even small things like helping someone move or lending someone a bit of money, I know that one is a, can be a bit difficult, but, you know, in j- small doses or something, just, oh, you forgot your wallet, I'll buy this bottle of water for you when we've gone for a walk right. no that's a, that's nothing, not a game-breaking right. thing no exactly right. but it's tiny things and i've had this before where i've spoken to people and they've gone they've brought it up they go oh mike you remember that time where you did this or this and i'm just like i, I no, i have no idea oh well, because you just did this one nice thing i was having like a really bad day and that right. little thing just changed the day and it just made my week a little bit less bad and then because of that i did this thing. and it's like you don't know how important being positive can be to people just even random people in the street just holding a door open for someone who walks past you just being generally polite you can change Mm -hmm. the you can turn someone's entire day week or even in some extreme cases even their life of just being positive especially if they don't have a lot of that in their life already and i think that being nice to people and being empathetic and just trying your best are things that are so undervalued in society and in almost every aspect of life really yeah yeah it's because like we've all been recipients of that before ourselves too where those little things that someone just does like casually like it like legit meant absolutely nothing to them at the time (laughs) yeah (laughs) like you know it meant nothing to like and you've done all those to different people too and like uh, that's one of the reasons about podcasting is so important is like you don't know there were times that we were going to stop the show just because like life was rough like like Mm. like during the time when um California was basically on fire completely, mm-hmm. like completely on fire. Middle of the pandemic, couldn't even go outside to our front yard, you know, because the air was was literally choking with smoke. Like, and and so like we were gonna stop. Like, no, and like literally, I got a message from one of the listeners, just like, hey, I just want you to know how much you mean to me. And it wasn't you, it wasn't anyone that we know. I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, we are we are going to continue to do this show because like it, it helped, and like. But like that is something you don't you don't know what you're doing to somebody's life when you're being good. And just like you don't know what you're doing if you're being negative too. Like you don't like mm. like you were saying with your mom, like like that one comment that she made has has like something that you've never really forgotten, right? And mm. you don't know what those negative things that you're putting out there are gonna do too. Like 
like who knows what throwaway line I said to my girls. Like I, I really watch what I say and, and I want them to always know. Like at the end of the day, like the last things I ever say to them is like, I love you. Everything you do is awesome. Like that, those are the last words I say to them before they go to bed. And, uh, but like who knows what rando throwaway line that I have said that is going to stick with them. You know what I mean? Because like I'm not perfect. I know I'm not. I, I mm. guarantee you I've said something stupid. And so anyway, but so like it goes both ways and you just got to really be careful. But yeah, no. Oh, like this. Um, we, we take a walk every day um, and by our house is a giant mulberry tree. I don't know if your mulberries are in the UK. They're, they're an okay fruit. They're an, they're an okay fruit. They grow like weeds here in, in, in my city. And they're just these little tiny little berries. They look like um, like a poor man's raspberry is basically what they okay. look like. Or a poor man's blackberry <laughs> is, what they, is what they look like. And they're fine. They're okay. My girls love them. But there's a tree in this neighborhood. And and they, they pick the mulberries every every time that we go on our walk. And it's really cute. And they complete, so they, they wear their mulberry shirts because if they go on their walk, these mulberries, they stain. They stain like you would not believe. Like their faces are just, they have these little like joker faces, you know, just like it's around their mouth and everything. It's hilarious. And uh, anyway, the girls, they wrote a thank you note to the people's house. We have no idea whose house this was. And they, they stuck it on their door. Well, anyway... We're, dry, we're doing one of our walks, and this car, like, pulls up real slow next to us, which is never great. Never great, <laughs> ever. And so, yeah. And they're like, are are you the girls that... And like, I'm there, too. And they're like, are you the girls that, that, that put the note on our door? And like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's them. It's like, that made me cry. I was having the worst year. <laughs> so anyway, And so this lady was crying next to us just because they drew a li- My eight-year-old just drew a little picture and just said, thank you for the mulberries. And just stuck it on her door. And like, so like, those random things, you just never know when they're going to affect somebody so huge. Yeah. So especially with kids, like with, with yeah, when kids, kids have that those when kids kids have the capacity to do you know very mean and horrible things, but they also I think more often than not, especially you know I know upbringing is a big part of it and things, but mm. from my experience because I've you know my brothers have got kids who are you know not that much younger than me in some ways and things you know so it's like I've seen a lot of kids grow up and you know life in general used to interact with kids in some way or another, mm-hmm. and I've just found that the capacity for love and compassion for children is sometimes it's so overwhelmingly nice like i this is a thing actually about my dad is that my niece amelie who's now 14 or something and you know we hang out every now and then <laughs> we watch the twilight movies occasionally or scott pilgrim and <laughs> <laughs> she, she's really like anime and my chemical romance and all these other cool things i like but we decided to watch the twilight films because i'd never seen them and i was drunk on my mum's wedding uh, years back and i told her that i would watch them all with her so i've kept i've, I've not watched the last one because the pandemic hit before the last one so oh no it's breaking uh breaking <laughs> oh, i'm so two. sorry for you <laughs> what, what will i do with my life but yeah. she when she was really young so my dad My dad passed away when I was 19, eight years ago. 2013, my dad passed away. And so I think Amelie was, I I think she was like seven or something when he passed, something like that. When she found out he was ill, which is about 18 months to a year before he passed, she, without telling anyone, she got her class to all sign a letter, like like a, a drawing she did, to my dad just saying, I'll never forget you. Or it was like, I, I love you very much. Uh, I care about you so much. You mean loads to me, granddad. And, you know, don't ever forget that. Something really sweet and nice. And completely unprompted. Right. No one asked her to do it. And she just did that. And it was just like, when I was, and this obviously when I was, when I was a late teen as well. And when I saw that, that her doing that act of kindness changed me f- forever. I was just like, because I saw how much that meant to my dad as well and my mum and obviously the family. It, it just it meant so much. And I was just like, that's just a, 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 a small, nice thing to do to someone. And it's it's similar in what your girls do. And I'm sure your girls do those sorts of things all the time. But you're just like, they do these things which are so nice that, you, that I didn't even think about. I, could, I didn't even think about doing right. something like that. But it's so nice to see kids flourish and be positive right. and how much of an impact they can have. Kids are awesome. Kids are great, and it is funny because like, how much different is your your actual thought process now and then? But then when we were like ten, it's not that much different, right? No, I know. you just know more. Still, you just, you just still like me. exist more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like my ten year old Chris was, he liked Lego and he liked <laughs> he Star Wars, like video games, and um, kind of thought thought that he liked girls at that point maybe you know what i mean like and so yeah. anyway like didn't didn't really know what he wanted to do with his life it's like 
that's it's about the same. Just like I just have like <laughs> lived more. No, I mean, but seriously. And so, like, if yeah, you can yeah. just keep that, if you can keep that childlike, uh, that energy for compassion, that energy for joy, those ener- that type of childlike energy, um, then like you're gonna be fine. Like I have always like the two movies, and they're not even my favorite movies. The two movies that have had the biggest impact on me in my life. Like, they're not my favorite movies. Anyway, but are the movies Big with Tom Hanks and the Love movie it. Hook with Robin Williams. Um, and and those movies both, they taught me something. And, and a lot of it was, was with Hook. With Hook, with Hook was like, that's the dad. The ending of the movie is the dad I want to be. Is I never want to get into that zone where I, I, I stop having adventures with kids because I'm an adult. And like, because mm-hmm. you always can remember what it was like to be a kid. And if you can do that, then you're going to be fine. And then with Big, it was always, I'm never going to be too old to be goofy. That That's what it is. Like, I'm never going to be too old to remember to not remember what it was like to be a kid. And like those two, both those movies, wildly different movies, but like those both, for some reason, have been the ones that have like, that's informed my adulthood are those two movies. And like, have fun. Don't forget what it's like to be a kid. And... Do not forget what's important. Like and like those two. They, I there's not a day that goes by I don't think about those movies. So that's yeah. perfect. I, I mean, we've been chatting for a very long time now. So I mean, I think I could easily talk to you about a hundred other subject matters like Lego yeah. or Star Wars or anything like that. But I think that we'll save that for another podcast down the line. Yeah. I think this has been like a really. Hey, can I come on again, Mike? Yeah, let's do this again. This is very 100%. cathartic. Yeah, it's very exactly. Cathartic. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way. I mean, we didn't even. I want to also congratulate you on your weight loss journey as well. I've been keeping oh, up with that. Oh, thanks, and man. Even yeah. since I last spoke to you, you look like you've lost weight and you look healthier and stuff. Not that you looked uh, unhealthy last time, but just no, no. You, you know, it's fine. Yeah, no, it's funny because like, yeah. So what today is? Uh, I weighed myself this morning. 142 pounds lost. So much of it. That's incredible. Pounds. In England, yeah, so that's that's like 10 stone, oh, yeah. isn't it? Because in England we do pounds and stone for some reason. So 14 yeah. pounds stone is makes 20, a stone, right? 20, uh, 14. 14. Okay, yeah. How yeah. Sto- How is that stone was 20? Ah, well, whatever. So, yeah, yeah 10 <laughs> stone. So, I've lost 10 stone, yeah. That's incredible. And uh, it's been a good process. Uh, Elise, my wife, is doing it along with me. And um, s- same vein is that, like, we, we were not sad and fat. Like, like that, like we were, we were, we were very overweight, but <laughs> obviously, because I still have more to lose. But we weren't unhappy. We just like we loved each other, and we still did things, and and, and had fun, and everything. Just like <sighs> how I tell people, if they want to lose weight, is just like f- pick something that you can't do because you're heavy, and then that when you can do that, that's when you've lost enough weight. Like mine was, I wanted to go on roller coasters. There was a certain ride at Universal Studios in in, in Hollywood. I couldn't go on with my girls. This is of course pre pandemic, but like mm-hmm. I couldn't go on that. Um, and it's always been on my mind. And then the pandemic hit like immediately after. So, uh, but like, it's always been on my mind. Like I want to go on that roller coaster. And so this is how much I have to weigh to be able to go on this roller coaster. And I, I hit that months ago, but, and just kept going, but like pick something that like is like that. And like for my wife, she want there's a, there, she wants to be able, she wanted to be able to shop at any store that she went to if she wanted a new shirt. She didn't want to have to like go to a special store. And like now, that's what I get to do too. Like I had to buy all new clothes. Oh my gosh, it's crazy! And um, it's not my thing. Clothes are like I just want to wear my cargo shorts and my polo shirt. I, I'm literally wearing cargo shorts right now. <laughs> yeah. Like loads hey. of pockets, just pockets for everything, comfy. Nobody should ever not cargo shorts ever because I have <laughs> held, I have held diapers, formula for bottles. I've held baby wipes, tampons, toys, Barbies my own wallet, my wife's wallet, all at the same time. Everything at the same time. And you know what? It's because I had shorts on. I got to wear shorts. And that is, yeah. These shorts, okay, these are like my favorite, because I, I used to wear yeah. uh, trousers that were like proper, like cargo trousers. So they'd have like yeah. loads of pockets. This is when, before I could drive or anything. So when I'd go to gigs right. and stuff, my friends would be like, here are my keys. Here's my right. phone. Put yes. it in the zip pocket. But here's yeah. the thing. These, I'm going to show you, people on Zoom, yeah. sorry. Uh, but look, yeah. these trousers, uh, right. See this pocket, okay? I'm going to put yeah. this down a little bit. Right. There this we is go. a double pocket. There's one pocket there, sure, by the way. okay? 
Thank you. Yeah. So there's one pocket there. This flap. There's another pocket underneath. Hey. So there's double pockets here, and there's a pocket down here. There's pockets on yeah. the back. Double pocket on the left. So on the front of me, there are six pockets on these shorts. Yeah. You have Mike. You're ready to be a dad already. You're gonna be a dad. Which, you're whenever ready. I go to Megan, she never has to take out a handbag because she's just like, yeah. hey, like no. if it's a big day sometimes, but it's like, oh, can you just. Put my put my car keys in your pocket along with my purse and right. my phone and all these other things. Like, yes, I can because I can fit them all. <laughs> don't make fun it's of car- and like my my wife used to be a a, a cargo short, uh, not hater, just like didn't understand it. But it's like the second that I wore my cargo shorts, and it's like, oh, I don't have to carry anything. You don't have to carry anything, love. I'll carry it all for you because I don't <laughs> care. I'm wearing cargo shorts <laughs> the most powerful person in the universe yeah they are pretty they are pretty goofy I, I agree they're pretty goofy anyway she bought for the first time because she could go to any store that she wanted because she's worked so hard and she bought herself a pair of cargo shorts <laughs> so. oh, you win that's it yeah. that's what Megan that's gets it. the most excited about if she finds any trousers that have got pockets yeah. she just gets so excited like watching a yeah. woman wear a dress which has pockets I don't know if anyone's oh. ever done that it doesn't matter if you're even into girls or whatever just meet or meet a person who likes wearing dresses they get excited about pockets because especially with women's clothing they don't oh. either they don't get pockets or the pockets it's are terrible it's a war crime it's a war it crime it's like, horrendous like, I don't understand <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so Leslie Nope says it in Parks and Rec. She's like, she, Ben Wyatt says to her, he's like, um, you have an opinion about pockets. She's like, yes, there aren't enough of them. And when Megan watched that, when I would have showed her Parks and Rec, she was like, yeah. yes. And everyone I yeah. know, like every woman is like, yes. Why are there not more pockets in women's clothing? Oh. And that you'd yeah. see them in a dress that's got pockets. And they just, there's nothing happier than Megan in her dress with pockets. <laughs> oh, it's, it's ridiculous. Pockets are- The little things. There is not a single article of my girl's clothing that don't have pockets. Like they, like I refuse- to buy them anything that doesn't have a pocket. Because, like, it just kind of puts it... Like, what if you find a quarter? Like, they find quarters all the time. It's like, yeah, I, I here you go. Like, I could hold it for them. But, like, they love it. Just slip it in that pocket. Like, I think <laughs> I think it's it's criminal to not have a pocket. Like, I'll tell you what's worse. Insane. I'll tell you what is a war crime. It's not not, it's not, not having pockets. It's fake pockets. Oh, when my When you gosh. have the flap and that? there's no pocket. You're just like, what? what are you teasing me? You're be- That's actually mean. That's horrible. <laughs> I bought these thinking I had pockets and I don't. So, I don't. yeah, pockets, guys. Pockets are the most powerful yeah. things in the world. Pockets bringing people together. That's the new podcast. Right. P- pockets right. and people. <laughs> um, Let's do so it. I'm, Let's do it. I'm going to bring this to an end because me and you will talk forever otherwise, which I would love. Uh, but you are always yeah. welcome on the podcast. We will, we'll get something organized later for this year because we can then just talk about Star Wars and Lego and that sort of stuff. Right. But um, well, What's coming out? What, what's coming out soon? We got anything Star Wars coming out? Or uh, The Bad Batch is on at the moment and then... Yeah. That's old, that's <sighs> old news, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I think... But actually, funnily enough, there's a video I have yet to watch on YouTube, which is a... Um, there's a guy I watch on YouTube called Styles Explained that kind of inspired me to start my uh-huh. Styles podcast. And I really recommend he releases videos like every day. But he recently released a video that's like half an hour long. And it's Star Wars have released this big thing about all the series that they're doing over the next like three years. And they've updated it, them with some of the dates. I think they've updated when they're bringing out Book of Boba Fett and things like that, mm-hmm. which is, I, I think it's, it's still going to be December. I think they've just been a bit more specific with it but we'll do it nearer the time and also you always welcome on like my styles podcast anything like anytime i can talk to you is amazing and when i can't i just listen to your podcast so we'll say <laughs> or, or we text yeah or yeah we text, or we yeah. message each other on yeah. <laughs> every yeah. time you reach a new episode you just get a message from me within like two hours of it dropping because right. i just i just want to talk about it um but please tell the lovely people i'll include links in the description to all your you know social media and all that sort of jazz but sort of final statement anything you want to say and then we'll close this up yeah, uh, you can absolutely follow us on Twitter or Instagram at like two. That's the number two, like two like things. Um, we're fairly active on social media, so um, and it's usually me. Um, very rarely it's Elise, but uh, yeah, every every Monday, Elise and I release something new. Um, the episode that came out this week features Mike, and it's about yes. BBC Sherlock, and it's fantastic. I have had um, so many good combos with people already, like, you haven't watched that? Whoa, this is my favorite. Um, I think you had a great Twitter exchange with Paul from the Varmints podcast. Um, yeah. Paul was messaging me today how much he loves you and thinks you're great. So he's he's actually really excited. You absolutely should have Paul on your show. He's a, an amazing guy. Um, and uh, But yeah, you, you, you really enjoy it. But yeah, Mike did a bang-up job on the episode already. So people are already loving it. Um, but yeah, we every Monday like to like things. We're on all podcatchers, um, and there's a Facebook group, but that's just a fan page. Just look for I like to like things. 
Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Just uh, hey, go out there and like a few more things. Uh, you're going to be happy for it. And that's the perfect way to end it. So I will yeah. wrap it up here. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Chris. It's been so much fun being able to chat with you again. And yeah, I look forward to chatting with you even more. The recording has stopped. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the end of the podcast. Thanks as always for tuning in, guys. If you haven't already, please go check out the I Like to Like Things podcast. You can start with the episode that I was on as a good starting point because it has become one of my favorite new podcasts. So links in the description to all of those things. So what else is there to talk about, my friends? Well, I've been doing quite a few guest spots as of recent. Um, myself and Chris Phelps of Comics in Motion were on the feed of Comics in Motion talking about the new Black Widow movie. Uh, there's a lot of spoilers within it, but it's about an hour-long chat. So make sure you go over to Comics in Motion to check that out. I've got a link to that in the description as well. If you also want to hear myself, my girlfriend Megan, and Tonya Todd, who's been on the show a couple of times, uh, give our thoughts on the first three episodes of the Loki series, once again, go over to Comics in Motion and you can check that out. But I've also got a link to that in the description too. Uh, and also episodes four to six will be out very very soon so you can make sure you keep an eye out for that as well also been on the geek talks podcast and frank burns i like the sound podcast so all of those things i just mentioned the link to that is in the description so what have you got coming up then? Well, next week is likely going to be part one of my conversation with Tom Everett, which is his second appearance on the show. Uh, we speak about stagecraft and I think morality and that sort of thing again. It's similar-ish to the first time you came on the show, but definitely the subject matter is different enough, so it's a lot of fun there. Um, I've also, I'm going to be doing another episode with Moxie Labouche of uh, the Your Brain on Facts podcast. We're going to do another UK versus US episode. We did one at Christmas, just gone, and so we're going to do one around the summertime as well, so that's going to be a lot of fun too. I'm Make sure I let you guys know when that kind of is due to come out as well. Aside from that, guys, I've got a few things in the pipeline. But if you want more details on that, go over to patreon.com slash genuine chit chat. For one pound a month, you get access to the audio RSS feed. You can pop it in wherever you listen to this podcast. And then you get access to the Patreon exclusive feed, at which you get the Afterthoughts episodes that come out once or twice a week. And then you also get whenever part one of an episode of Genuine Chit Chat drops on this usual feed, you get access to part one and part two in one big unsplit episode. So when the conversation, when part one of the conversation with Tom Everett drops next week on the Patreon feed, both parts will drop in one episode. So for as little as £1 a month, you support the show, you get early access to stuff, and you get the Afterthoughts exclusive show that I do with Megan, where we review movies, TV shows, that sort of thing. But check out in the description, because there is a link to where we spoke about Spider-Man Free. You can listen to that completely for free, and it's about half an hour long as well. So you know it's a pretty good taster to see if you want to potentially support the show, and that's kind of a good way to see the kind of content that you get a hold of. Aside from that, guys, you know, if you donate £2 a month or more, then you get access to the feed on Patreon itself. So you get the audio feed as well, but you also get get to see uh, the future guest lists that I do at the start of each month, as well as all the guest spots I've been doing, some of the afterthought stuff that's going to be coming out. A lot of guests that are kind of in the pipeline and things as well. So just loads of cool things over at Patreon. You can support the show and get loads of other stuff too. But links to that are in the description. Aside from that, guys, check out my Star Wars show, which is on the feed of Comics in Motion, or it's on the feed of Genuine Chit Chat on the YouTube channel. And uh, I basically talk about Star Wars comics, and at the moment I'm doing the War of the Bounty Hunters crossover, which is set between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, and it's basically all about... Boba Fett transporting Han Solo's frozen in carbonite corpse to Jabba the Hutt and it gets stolen by Crimson Dawn halfway and you may remember them from Solo A Star Wars Story and it's kind of how that all unfolds and all of the connective tissue it does to the rest of the universe and it includes Dr. Aphra, Darth Vader, the main run of Star Wars, the Bounty Hunters run, loads and loads of cool things there and there's loads of other stuff as well. You do not need to have ever read a single Star Wars comic to enjoy Star Wars comics in canon. I've designed the show specifically so I give you guys the narrative of the story itself and I give lots of other tidbits of information and trivia. So when a name that I mention comes up that you may recognize, I will then give a bit of backstory and information about them and where you may have seen them before and those sort of things as well. So if you want to delve into the worlds of comics without having to buy a single comic, or if you've already read a lot of Star Wars comics and you want to get a refresher or a taste of what other comics there are that you haven't bought and you want to try those, any of those options, go over to Star Wars Comics and Canon on the feed of Comics in Motion or check it out on Genuine Chit Chat's YouTube channel. And also in the description to this episode, there is a link as there always are for all of the many things that I talk about. Aside from that, guys, there's not really much else to say unless I do a big rambly mess, which I'm not going to do. So I really hope you guys enjoyed all of this. Make sure you give Chris of the Like to Like Things podcast all the love in the world. And uh, make sure, obviously, you subscribe to Genuine Chit Chat for all the other cool conversations that I have. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful week and weekends. And whenever you're listening to this, I hope you're having a good day. And uh, I will talk to you guys next week with Tom Everett. You have just experienced host, creator, 
everything else are of genuine chit-chat, and also the host and creator of Star Wars Comics and Canon, found on the Comics in Motion podcast, Mike Burton.